Resistance, I imagine, is a concept that is negative in nature. Revolt is another story. Revolt can be constructive. Revolt has a positive connotation to it as well. The revolt, the word, that word in Turkish, it's called ayaklanma, and it can be translated as, as getting on your foot, standing up like that. And that's also also a nice connotation of like from passivity to activity. Kavgaya girdi, emin adımlarla yürüyoruz. Biz bu karanlık yolun sonunda, doğacak güneşi görüyoruz. Dağlar yaşıyor, bak yakın aşıyor. Kızıl yıldız zafer kuşu, bu bir rüya değil, bu bir rüya değil. Yıldızıdır kurtuluşu, bu bir rüya değil, bu bir rüya değil. Yıldızıdır kurtuluşu. Kara deryalarda bir fenersin, senin ışığında yürüyoruz. Biz bu karanlık yolun sonunda doğacak güneşi görüyoruz. Fabrikalarda biz, tarlalarda biziz, biziz hayatı yarata. My relationship with the park uh, started when I was studying architecture in uh, Istanbul Technical University, which is very close to the park. So we would go at lunch break and uh, we would pass by the park. Even though Gezi Park is very small, I, I liked it because there was this little nice uh, green space in the city center. Central, so whenever we would like to sit in a green place, uh, we would go there. This part, it's the last few acres of one very big park called Park Number no. Two, which was founded in 1940s and which was partially sold to the private capitals, to the hotels. And now we have we have the last few acres of this park. Actually, in the beginning, we never thought he could do it, as we thought for the third bridge, as we thought for many other projects. But when we understood that it's happening, a couple of people started organizing concerts in the park. This happens in the past three months, maybe. And uh, people started going to the park even more, fearing that they are going to lose a park. Maybe even people that wouldn't go before, they started going to the park.
On the 28th, uh, early morning of 28, the, the construction has started in the, in the Gezi Park. Yeah? And people have just gone there without, without having any kind of appointment. They just went there and started trying to stop it. And then things have actually started. Then a group of people have given some more uh, attention on this process for two days. And then people have started coming there, putting up their tents in the park. and. Uh, waiting in the park, maybe making a turn in the park to, to protect it. When the police attacked, they attacked at 5 o'clock in the morning, so I was not there because I was not sleeping there. So there were very few people in the park when the police first attacked. On the 29th morning, like 4 in the morning, the cops uh, came and burned down some of the tents and uh, put everybody out of the park. But we had some uh, parliamenters who were there who helped them to, to protect the trees. After they burned, burned down the tents, I was there that day, all day. And I went home, the next day I wake up, go to work, and around 11 o'clock I see that they're just throwing gas bombs into like people who are just standing there. So that, you know, in things like this, there's this one final event that triggers it all. And suddenly everyone was on the street. When we were there on the 31 uh, May in the morning, 10, 10 o'clock, uh, there is supposed to be a press release from the Divan Hotel because the police went in 5 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning and barricaded the park. So when I was there, uh, we were just 50 people. And 2 p.m., when the police attacked it in the Taksim Square, again, there were less, even we were 40 people or something. And still, I didn't imagine when 1,000 people came out in the night, I was very in shock. Uh, they didn't let us uh, arrive to the park, actually. So thousands of people were around the park area, but the police was um, had a barricade in the Taksim Square. We were trying to go to the square, but we were always facing the police forces. So uh, we were on the streets until um, they threw so many um, tear gas. And at some point, we went home. And next day again we were on the street, and next day again. So this went on for days and days and days. Since one month is like that. And we, we were like in the middle of the crowd. Don't know what to do, and don't know what's going on. And little by little, after two or three hours, we, we didn't go anywhere. I don't know why. I stayed there with my friends. I don't know why. I, don't, I really don't know. I, want, I didn't want to leave that place to see what would happen. And then later, and the police came closer and we felt the gas more. When you feel the gas more and more, you really feel that like you're in the middle of something really serious, but you want to stay there. Polis tabii ki de portakal gazı ve biber gazı ve bilmediğimiz bir sürü madde kullandı. Ben bizzat polisin hedef alıp insanların üzerine biber gazı fişeği fırlattığını gördüm. Bu konuda da e, pek çok e, şikayetler aldık. Hatta bir tanesi de benim müvekkilim oldu. E, arkasında ensesine biber gazı fişeği gelmiş ve yaralanmıştı. That first day on Friday we were here in Jihangir first and then we went we took the side streets and we went to İstiklal Avenue which is like a really big uh, shopping area. I was so worked up. I found myself on the very front line. Actually, those days the police were just uh, gassing you and watering you. That day we only, I only experienced the really, really bad gas. That I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I thought I was going to just collapse. What they didn't, what the government didn't uh, take into account was that if you gas people too much, they get used to it. I mean, people got used to it. They, they knew uh, what they were expecting. When they go to the Gezi Park uh, revolts, they, they knew what, were, what they were going to experience. So it had an it had a interesting effect of too much, uh, too much um, oppression produced its own, its own, how to say, downfall. The, the uniqueness that is about the movement is, I think, 
Um, although it, it stemmed from a very basic ecological um, uh, protest, uh, like saving the park or saving some, tr some few trees, um, there was, um, it represented a kind of a riots of a collection of accumulation of um, a lot of other things. It was like an uh, accumulation of uh, everything that has been happening for the past 10 years. This is a movement that will, that's about gathering, taking the basic human rights and gathering, uh, so expressing that we're all part of one. So it's, I cannot consider it as a political movement. So it was all started in the Gezi Park, which we see. I think it's because women, they felt uh, that new laws and the new things that the, the government is putting in front of us, they are losing their rights. So many other uh, rights, you know, women start to, to feel that they are really under a big oppression. So with this new movement, uh, with the Gezi movement, they felt that they have to take care, they have to defend their uh, bodies and they have to defend their rights, their lives. That's why the women from different uh, sectors of the society were, took on the streets. This is the municipality bus uh, of the Istanbul uh, municipality carrying policemen for a demonstration that will be held to protest uh, the attack last night in Lice and the rape of a Kurdish girl uh, by soldiers. Um, so you can see our money is being used uh, and municipalities should belong to people, not the government authorities or political parties, but they are all being used to suppress us, to kill us, to destroy us. Also, Kurdish movement was in the uh, the, the people of Kurdish movement was also in the Taksim uh, Gezi Park. Actually, Kurdish people have been oppressed by the Turkish state for a long time, and there has been a struggle for 30 years in Turkey. What changed with the Gezi resistance is now the Turkish people who are living in the west, uh, urban, you know, big cities. Now they see that uh, the uh, they feel. Um, more, more in solidarity with the Kurdish people. The reason is just so simple because they have seen the violence of the government and so they get started to understand a disadvantaged minority group, although they are not actually a minority at all. So they, they fight it together? They want freedom, they want equality uh, that would be applied to all the sub communities of the whole country. Uh, first of all, and uh, they want their democratic rights in practice to be practiced in law system. We are just next to Gezi Park. Since one month there are protests in Gezi Park and those trees and the park is not actually just the only problem. It has been just an event that it happened. Actually what happened in Istanbul is everywhere and this is a very important example. We are in Tarlabasha district. It is a Kurdish district where people are living. They are happy here, they are loving their district. This is the result of a reurbanization project. What is going to happen with this project and projects that they are similar to this is 
taking people that are different and bringing them far away. I mean, basically the government uh, with private investor, what they are going to do, they are going to build in the, in the front of the district uh, a gated community with hotel, residential. They say we are keeping the front of the building, we are ma making them empty and building them again. This is a very bad thing because Istanbul is a city where a lot of people are living together. As well, I'm going to taxi, I'm drinking beer and I'm seeing still different people. Istanbul is like that. If you go in another district, you will find still different people. And this is basically the most beautiful things of Istanbul, I can say. You can see Arabs, religious people, secularists, communists, leftists, nationalists, but they live in the same place. Gezi Park, Gezi Park it has been a very beautiful event because put all these people together. And anyone was caring about their ideology or their previous idea. And what is happening as well in, in an urbanistic scale is exactly the same. I mean, they are, they are doing with urbanism and with architecture and with construction, the same that they were trying to do with Gezi Park and they try, the same that they are trying to do with the society. I mean, if you don't want to make Istanbul die, all of us, we should try to protect and Gezi Park, but especially Tarlabashe and the other district like here, because in Gezi Park there are, I guess, 500 trees, and it's very important, it's a, it's a symbol, and all of us, we love to go there, and after all, those days we get loving more that place, but here a lot of people are living here, and I mean, it's about the life of people. <laughs> expected such a violent, such a violent practice. I've been in streets all the time uh, since the beginning of the movement, since the beginning of the attack and the violence itself. I've been paralyzed. And everybody had the chance to see what was going on in the park after that attack because it was really big, it was really violent. And we were all, pass we were all in peace, eh? we, were, we weren't creating any, any kind of problems to the police. And then the whole day long of the 31st, the, the clashes started in the streets, in, the, in different parts of uh, Istanbul. And uh, it, the night of the 31st, there were like thousands of people, more than 10,000 people who were resisting against the, against the police to, to get out of the uh, taxi and to get out of the, the Gezi Park. Like, it was maybe four in the morning when the police even started getting back and we were getting the barricades even more closer to the square. And at the end, we, we took all the square and we took back the, the, the, the Gezi Park. We, we got inside and we started the resistance in Gezi Park for, for three weeks. big armored car was coming at us like 70 kilometers per hour 
really fast. And police were running beside it, and we were just trying to escape from them. And we, I just went on, into a random building, you know, people were opening their doors. And I went into a random building, and we went upstairs, and this guy, who had an apartment there, he opened his door, he said, come in, come in. And we, we, we went into his apartment, like 20 people, I, I knew none of them. Um, we were in his apartment, and we were looking at the street, but we also didn't, we were like uh, hiding. Because they were also uh, shooting at the windows. And while we were hiding, we saw like uh, anyone they caught on the street, they were like really beating very hard and uh, taking away. On Thursday evening they attacked, and on Friday we were all in Taksim Square. I felt that I have to be uh, a part of the protests. After like really like three or four a.m. in the morning, everywhere was like a war, and we were still on the street. And we said, "Okay, okay." I, I said to my friends, "Okay, guys, this is too much for us because we couldn't." do anything. I mean, we cannot do anything. We are not fighters. We are here for peace. They don't excuse. They don't apologize for police violence. That's for, I mean, that's why I was saying. Uh, they say what what we did was necessary. But one step before that, police is not even uh, allowed to use force. Not even disproportionate. Uh, he's not, they're not even allowed to use force where there's a peaceful protest. Yeah, that, I mean, as Amnesty International, what we've been trying to do is, is is look at the response of the authorities to people who want to exercise their right to peaceful protest. What we've seen is the Turkish authorities have denied people their rights to take to the streets and to protest peacefully. So we should focus on the, even the bigger uh, point here, the violation, human rights violation here and the un unlawfulness is even graver than people can see. Uh, so we have the duty to disclose this very uh, certainly to people. And then he uh, ensured to us as colleagues that we will do every necessary steps for this unlawfulness to actually be corrected. What, what we know is that there have been thousands of people um, injured across Turkey as a result of these protests. Um, it's important to remember that the protests just haven't been taking place in Istanbul but taking place in the capital Ankara, in the main city in the west, in Izmir, and in cities across Turkey, and they continue across Turkey. So there have been at least 8,000 injuries which the Turkish Medi Medical Asso um, Association has documented, and it's very likely that the real number of injured people will be much higher than this. People are afraid to go to public hospitals because they will have their names taken and they'll be associated with uh, the protests. Um, I interviewed one young man who was hit in the eye with a gas canister and has lost his sight. And there are there are at least 11 people, probably more, who have lost their sight. Taksim Square in central Istanbul. And Demonstrations against the Turkish government continued overnight. Tayyip Recep Erdogan told crowds that he would. Erdogan has vowed to press on with plans to build on Gezi Park in Taksim Square. Second day, Ankara has seen a significant. Despite provocations by illegal organizations, despite the damage done to local shops, despite attacks with stones and petrol bombs, the police retain the authority vested in them. But as I said before, I have given orders to the Interior Minister and to the Governor that necessary steps will be taken.
Erdogan is a very good, I would say, uh, like a circus acrobat. He knows how to manipulate things. He's a pro good professional uh, politician, right? I don't know if I, if how uh, he can turn this into this. I imagine that uh, maybe in the early days, maybe after the 12th day the, or the sec uh, second week when the event started, he could have turned this into his own interest and made himself a hero, right? Some people from his party uh, later um, tried to calm things down, but Erdogan never made a step behind. So after a point, we started thinking that he officially started his election campaign. AKP, it's a power block. How to say, pillars of uh, political power, right? Uh, liberals were uh, part of this and they, and they were dispelled uh, in the recent years. That his aim was uh, to keep even stronger his parts, people that vote for his party, and completely leave apart the other ones. So he created a group called The Others, which is all of us, actually. The only thing that uh, that glues this power block is, the, is this figure of Erdogan, the very angry man, very strong man, who giving orders 24-7. AKP, in their mind, in their governing mentality, they have us and them. And they said, oh, this is not about trees. This is not about uh, right to the city. They, I mean, they didn't use right to the city, but this is not about trees, they said. This is about AKP. They don't like AKP. And that's why they are fighting, fighting us. Right? And, and this is true. I mean, like, no, I'm not, you don't have to be genius to see this. Now the official explanation from IKP is an explanation of conspiracy theory that there is a, a international interest uh, lobby within the finance system and they, they want to stir things up in Turkey so that the markets fluctuate and within this fluctuation of markets they make easy profit, fast profit and that's why they, they support, how they support they don't tell the protesters so they they say that what see what what we see on the uh, on gezi park is not what is what it what it actually is there is some something driving force behind it Stations, people used to sing that song, but it was very much associated with like left wing. But as probably it's been talked before, too, this movement was just so uh, brought everyone together from a, uh, irrespective of ideologies. And we, when we were in the park, everyone was singing it, and we saw uh, people from 
the very strict nationalist party because they had their own hand gesture and they were doing their own hand gesture and singing Bella Ciao, which was an amazing contrast for us. Uh, during these days, a lot of people got injured and a lot of people got arrested and uh, we always hoped that Erdogan would try to calm things down. The more people were injured and the more he was even more aggressive, that gave us force actually to continue. That gave uh, even more motivation to the protests. And if the police continue to re repress the, the demonstrations and the politicians, uh, deny them their right to protest, then there's every likelihood that this will continue, yes. We now here are gathered to protest. Uh, uh, a fire shot against civil people that happened yesterday. Well, people are here to show their solidarity. With this is what this country was based on in the foundation in the very beginning in the 1923. So it was based on the solidarity of the publics and which we call Turk, the peoples of Turkey. Turk means the people of Turkey that lives together. So it doesn't really represent a specific origin or race and we're here to represent tens of different races, ethnicities and uh, religions and sects. The thing I liked the most was there were people from every part of society. This might be a cliche answer, but it was actually true. Uh, there were people, I mean, there were like nationalists, they were like Kemalists, which are like the really hardcore seculars, hardcore nationalists. And there were actually some hardcore Islamists in the movement. So I, I like, what I like the most is that uh, I saw all of them in one place. All in all, this moon has taught me that actually uh, the people of Turkey can actually really gather up under the same umbrella, with the same feelings, with the same purpose. Well, to tell the truth, nobody was ex expecting such a solidarity. I mean, it was, for us, in the beginning, it was ridiculous what we were seeing. I mean, we were seeing people and ideas and politics who were standing together, who we could not never imagine they could even discuss about something without having any kind of fight. Inside, we started learning not how to create the empathy, but how to have the power to tolerate each other. Because empathy would be a, still a great word for this kind of a relation between these different ideas. But we learned how to create a tolerance to each other. And uh, this is how also, this is the, the good thing that we have started inside. After the whole period, after trying to help each other, then we started also hearing each other, then we started listening to each other. took the attention, they were fighting incredibly uh, for their rights and for everyone, not for only their rights, for everyone. And Charshim is a football group, uh, they are an activist group, they're not organized in a, in, a, in a legal way, they're just a group. They are now our heroes, it's incredible. been activists and uh, they were always in protests in meaningful protests against the, these mole this mole culture uh, you know they were protesting everything and with this movement they created a great incredible balance of action with a state of mind as well they combined it together they were there to fight as well when I say fight of course not fighting that but resisting actively, but at the same time coming up with incredible solutions and gathering people together in a very, very um, lovely way. They were very smart at the same time, so it was an amazing combination. It was all this movement could offer, it, like, packed in a way. 
So that's why they became our heroes, and they never even done anything wrong during this process. The law is actually there to protect the protesters because it's a constitutional right to make a peaceful protest. But people got arrested during these protests uh, and they were condemned of uh, being against the police, preventing the police from doing their work, which is kind of like the light version, and then acting against the government, which is a bit more uh, heavier offense. And while acting against the government, working in an organization, which is even a harder offense. Öncelikle sakin olmalıyız ve hiçbir şeyden korkmamalıyız. Ben de mesela bu olaylara katıldığımda tarif edildim Ramadan otelde. Çevik kuvvet görevli avukat olduğum için etrafımı sardı ve tekmelemeye başladı. Bir sürü hakaretler ettiler. Ancak iki saat sonrasında tekrar Beyoğlu ilçe emniyette nöbetteydim. Burada önemli olan sakin olmak, yılmamak, her şeyi tutanak altına almak. Göreve giderken tek başına değil birden çok kişiyle gitmek, birden çok avukatla birlikte gitmek. Çünkü avukatlar her ne kadar güçlü gibi görünse de konumsal olarak hani o olaylarda aslında e, zayıflar, çok zayıflar. Çünkü polisin direkt hedefi halindeyiz. O yüzden birden çok avukatla birlikte göreve gitmenin faydalı olacağı düşüncesindeyim. The, the people affected by this repression haven't just been the protesters. The people have also been affected at people defending the rights of the protests or according to authorities in some way providing logistical support and that's also included lawyers uh, there was a case where more than 40 lawyers were detained they were attempting to make um, a press statement outside um, a main courthouse in Istanbul and the result of this press statement which they tried to make about police violence they were um, they were dragged along the ground by police officers they were put into a police bus and they were held in detention for um, 11 hours um, some of them were, were subject to ill treatment as well um, or, or, uh, whilst they were in the bus and uh, this is a really serious example of repression against people defending the rights of protesters they didn't make a differentiation between the lawyers and the protesters, like the national, uh, normal citizens, but because they didn't understand that lawyers have an even bigger responsibility to stand up and say that this is unlawful, uh, because it's their primary duty. And what's more shocking is that they're not even allowed to make the statement which they are uh, actually required to because it's their job. So it was even more shocking and more unlawful in that sense. In lots of cases there were makeshift hospital facilities um, next to a hotel or in some case people were being um, treated inside hotels and other buildings. So what we've seen a lot is that police have used uh, tear gas and water cannon very close to some of these facilities in a way which has affected the works of the uh, of the doctors treating um, injured protesters in there so in many cases it's very difficult to uh, say for certain if the medical facilities themselves were targeted or if there was just so much tear gas used in the area that it affected the the medical facilities as well but there have been a number of cases of people, uh, for example, police taking the gas masks off individuals, uh, police confiscating the medicine used to treat people who've been subjected to, to tear gas. And these are really, really serious allegations that, that we're investigating now, in addition to this threat to investigate and, and potentially prosecute the, the doctors. Sağlık Bakanlığı'nın şeye... Uh... Tabipler odasına bir yazı gönderdiğini hep herkes biliyor zaten hepimiz biliyoruz haberleri de çıktı yansıdı bu hani Sağlık Bakanlığı doktorlara neden hangi hakla e, işte e, doktorları Gezi Parkı'na gönderdiniz, revirler kurdunuz gibi bir soruyla, daha doğru soruşturmayla sorular gönderdi. Avukatlara yönelik şu an resmi olarak bir baskı yok. Ancak duyumsal olarak aldığımız operasyon düzenlenecek gibi şeyler var. Ha, hükümet ne kadar yardım eden varsa tabii hepsini baskı altına almak isteyecek, bir kıskacı almak isteyecek. Ama biz de direneceğiz. Başka şansı yok. In addition, there have been lots of journalists who've been targeted, you know, people beaten on the street and, and arrested 
both uh, foreign and and Turkish journalists. Um, and there have been uh, cases of doctors who have been detained as well. That's something we're looking into at the moment. But certainly there was a statement from the Minister of Health that said that these makeshift hospital facilities were illegal and that the, the doctors or the medical staff who were working in these, in these places will be subject to investigation. So obviously this is completely unacceptable. Doctors or anyone providing first aid should never be subject to any investigation or punishment for doing this really necessary work. And this is just one example of the repression against people supporting the rights or in some way supporting uh, the demonstrators. Biz Taksim Meydanı'nın yayalaştırma projesini yapıyoruz, yapacağız. Ki orada da yine biz o tarihi kışlayı yapacağız. Biz birkaç tane çapulcunun o meydana gelip insanımızı, halkımızı yanlış bilgilendirmek suretiyle tahrik etmesine biz pabuç bırakmayız. Çünkü... Bu millet bize reyini verirken tarihime sahip çık diye verdi. Oradan bir ses geldi. Cami yapacağız dedi. Evet cami de yapacağız. Evet cami de yapacağız. Çapulcu was a word that the prime minister defined the movement and people inside. Which I mean this is another word he used with marginals. Meaning that these people are just you know bandits. So that test uh, label... Uh, it was actually, we made fun of it. I'm Prime Minister of Turkey. I'm feeling rather perky. I want you to alert me. If you see anyone criticizing my plans, we'll deal with them covertly. We'll bribe them with some money. And if they still don't agree, we'll use tear gas. Yeah, it is us. We are the looters. So yes, we are, we've been looting the whole day around. We are doing this just because of the looters. No problem with that. Gas them all, gas them all, what's the opposition for? Gas them everywhere, not just tax and square on their graves, I will build them all. Gas them all, gas them all, what's the opposition for? Cause the West don't care if I play unfair, cause the West only cares about oil. You know, humor and ag aggression are two very op different things, so... Uh, it continues its humor, even if there's a lot of aggression. The force of irony, which I had been experiencing from in this whole protest, this whole resistance, is extreme. I have to tell you. I mean, I'm, I'm, maybe this this was the thing. Maybe I was most impressed. I may say, not surprised, but impressed. Prime Minister had been trying to create many different kind of accusations, many different kind of uh, sayings against the protesters, and they were finding a way of giving a response. In like in a few hours, we had the responses which had been shared from, uh, by the whole social media, by everybody around. And it was, it was like saying, okay, look, we are the clever ones, not you. From the beginning, media didn't show that much uh, attention to the protesters. They made live broadcasts from Taksim Square making a news about the people who want to get onto the Taksim Square, but they were showing Taksim Square, no action at all, but the action was happening in fact uh, around Taksim Square, so they didn't, see, well, they didn't show the action. Uh, till the second week, uh, there were just protesters and vandalism showing on the TV, but not the reason for the protesters. They sat in the park for a peaceful protest. I will not tolerate any civil unrest. Any journalist reporting will face arrest. All TV channels must show penguins. In the, the hardest, the harshest times of the police violence, which I have to tell, which I still have psychological problems from those days, on TV, people were watching some documentaries about the penguins in Antarctica, and then we start, started calling us. Uh, we, we started calling a resistance 
for, for, for Antarctica. He said, okay, Dylan Antarctica, resist Antarctica. When clashes raged across the center of Turkey's largest city on May 31st, Turkey's normally colorful media was unusually quiet. CNN's affiliate, CNN Turk, did broadcast regular news bulletins on the clashes. The network, which operates under license from CNN's parent company, Time Warner, is editorially independent of CNN. Late at night last Saturday, in the midst of the worst anti-government protests in a decade, CNN Turk continued to broadcast regularly scheduled programs like this documentary on penguins. Behind their feisty charm. The penguins have become a national joke in Turkey, marked by a recent guest on CNN Turk. The media is always with the government. They work with the government. They have to be with the government. They must, I must say. Uh, they cannot be independent. So they have, want to have good relations with the government so that they can benefit from this. I mean, this is simple economic uh, benefit. The hero of the revolt of Gezi Park, it was Twitter actually. I mean, people were using Twitter, they organized through Twitter, and that was the only, only reliable source of information. I start living with my phone every time I was checking on the Twitter, what's going on, and I, I had friends at the park or on the street on Taksim Square, I was posting stuff to just say, okay guys, this is going on here, this is this was going on there, and so be careful, don't go there. And I was just posting stuff, people need this, that, so please bring some, for example, medicines and stuff. So I, I became like a press member who tried to help people from Twitter. Here it was all about people on the field, I mean resisting and tweeting at the same time, saying that oh we need this uh, medical supplies or we need gas masks or whatever, being told it, things like, like practical information that is required immediately. Şu anda tabii bir Twitter denilen bir bela var. Burada abartı. Twitter, Twitter diye bir lafı var bir gazeteci. Ne derseniz hepsi var. Yalanın daniskası burada. Tabii bu sosyal medya denilen şey aslında şu anda toplumun ve toplumların bana göre baş belasıdır. Why does the Prime Minister see uh, the social media as a threat? Is that it is uh, it cannot be under his control? I spend all my time in front of the computer, you know, trying to pass the correct information because the mainstream media did not show the reality. Twitter users saying that there is a lot of disinformation going on. I mean, you have, you have to stop it. You. You, you write, oh, the police are coming from this direction at, that, at this uh, point, and it gets old in five hours, but somebody reposts and so, like, it, it confuses people. So they developed a system of writing down the hour. So, like, you give the information, you give the hour, so that there's a, a self-invented uh, way of uh, validity to your information. I'm a part of a group called Müşteriklerimiz, uh, which is called Our Commons, we may say in English, creating the video archive of this whole system, not in a way of, not in, from a point of view of a, of a documentarist or something like that, but from a point of view of an activist, of, a resist, of, of someone from the resistance who's, who's coming from inside. Not showing, but making people see what we are seeing from inside. In the first point, we are the, we are the protesters, we are the activists, and then we are the video makers and our way of protesting is making the video. We are not making the video of the protest. After uh, government reoccupied Taksim Square and the Gezi Park violently. Uh, they didn't let anyone in. I mean, there were. It was a weird day. That day was actually very weird because you could walk on the avenue, on the square, but if you gather ten people, the police would come say, "Please walk away." Please walk away. So there was this one person, uh, and he, he he he was a performance artist, and he went to the square and like just stand there, stood there for six hours, eight hours straight. And that was another phase of the revolt, the passive resistance revolt, and it was beautiful.
until the 11th, we had the control of the whole Taksim Square. We, we were uh, having a different, we were experiencing a different situation. We were having a non-governmental policy, which was much more pacific, which was much more in peace, which was controlled really good. And on the 11th, the police take back Taksim Square. And then we stayed in the Gezi Park, of course. And it was on 15th when we had, again, clashes, big ones. 15th and 16th was pretty violent again. Actually, the, the police violence didn't stop. It, it took, it went on in this way for, for, for a really long time. And at the end, they got back to the park. So after the after the Taksim Gezi Park is uh, occupied by the police because police evicted the Taksim Gezi Park, uh, people started to look uh, in other places uh, to talk, to be together. So first, uh, the first meeting, first forum started in Beşiktaş. After losing the park, we decided to make these forums in different parts of the city. And now the struggle is going on in, the, in many Gezi Parks, which is around the whole Turkey, in, in like 36 different parks in Istanbul, like in uh, nine different cities in Turkey, people are gathering in a, in a, in a park which has the spirit of Gezi Park. Like people started to talk about their uh, opinions, about, uh, about all this process, about what, what they think, what they want to do, what they think about state, what they think about uh, police. Slowly, slowly, people started to think uh, some practice also. This forum, your Tupac forum in Kadıköy, has experienced, first of all, and uh, how the democratic processes do actually work, basically. Uh, the forum itself takes about four or five hours, and there are many speakers, and there is a voting system which does not depend on the majority uh, idea. So many people have experienced a lot of, uh, of the knowledge and the practice of the democracy itself. And this is uh, too valuable. We start to, we, in the forum, we try to we work towards establishing committees and workshops and things like that. We cannot do much because uh, each every two nights or three nights, there's a new, we learn about a new crime that the government commits, and we make we we feel compelled to make a demonstration. How many people? Three hundred. Three hundred. Maybe I can say three hundred, two hundred, four hundred. People got the taste of doing politics, you know, and as as as the as people, there was a, a shared sense of being expelled from politics for a very long time. Doing something together, to resisting against the state together, uh, changes people's ideas, you know? and they uh, they ate together, they slept together. So there is the sense of being outside of politics and these forums and this uh, Gezi Parker revolt has become has given the taste of politics doing politics and I think this is going to go on. And we saw people who have never ever taken any interest in, well, in, these, in these kind of things, getting together in the whole Taksim Square, in the whole uh, Istiklal Street, and marching against the cops to protest against this. I mean, this is, this is, not, this is a big breaking point, we have to understand. Two weeks ago, I was actually, after the new alcohol law, uh, I was actually looking at options to move to another country, because I had no hope. You can discuss about many things, many problems of Turkey. You can discuss about economics. You can discuss about uh, some some democratic nice, not all of them, but making a Republican or making a making a person who is really attacked, uh, attached with the Atatürk ideas to this to support the Kurdish groups. It was something nearly impossible, and now we see it. We are seeing Turkish flags for a protest against what had been done to Kurdish people by the. By the, by, by the Turkish army. So, this is how it is. So, one of the positive things is that there have been lots of people protesting on, on human rights issues. 
um, people demonstrating for the right you know, to engage in peaceful protest, demonstrating against police violence, demonstrating against the fact that the police are not being brought to justice for the abuses that they've committed. But two weeks have passed, I mean a month have passed, and I I'm, I'm actually have hope, and I actually have, I have seen that people can actually react, because in the last 20 years, there has never been anything like this. Of course, it's gonna continue forever, I guess, because this has been an amazing breakthrough for individuals and for masses. Gezi Park was uh, just the beginning of everything, so it's just a symbol. So we lose a park or not, the struggle will continue for sure. Now people are awakened and uh, we will keep on tracing every uh, right that we have Every park that he will try to demolish, we will be there. In the end, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I think we won. And that's why he's even more angry. Uh, we won because we became a whole. We were very separate groups of people that we became a whole, thanks to him, actually. So uh, at least we won that. We, we, we are united now. So we have more power than before. Mm -hmm.